So in this video I want to show something subtle but important to understand with C++. Uh, this is definitely a C++ language kind of gotcha. If we notice here I want to show the difference between this return statement versus this return statement. And pause the video and think, uh, what's the difference between this return statement versus this one? Hopefully you pause the video. Um, in this return statement I'm constructing an object and returning it at the, at the same time, or immediately returning it if you want. Whereas here, I'm returning an object I constructed earlier, did some stuff with the object, and then I, I return it later. And and I'm, th this video is about the return value optimization. It's a C++ um, gotcha, maybe a hidden thing, but something to be aware of. And, and since these math libraries, I'm expecting to use them a lot, I want to make this code lean and mean as possible. So let me let me show you a little gotcha here that I oh nice I have I have some reminders. Let's let's get rid of the reminders and shut down my email. Uh okay. So here's an example I made offline. Uh, I mean, it's called Scratch CPP. You can think of this as a sandbox if you want. It's just a place where I like to twiddle around with C++ to approve things or learn things or uh, the term I like to say is wrestle with things. So in this file, I pretty much wrote another vector 2D class similar to what we have in our engine. I implemented the constructor very much like our engine. I said some default values here for x and y, explicit so we don't implicitly convert a floating point value to a vector. We initialize x and y here. And then I put a trace statement here. And then I added a copy constructor and an assignment operator. And they both do some work, but the important thing is that they, they print themselves. So this video, I'm trying to show you when are these constructors called and why and so forth and how can we limit the number of calls that, that happen. And then down here in this function I have double me values, maybe it's pirate day, who knows, but I take an x and a y and I make a temporary vector and then I say temp.x is x times 2, this x over here, multiplying it by 2 and assigning it to temp, and then this y, same thing, y times 2, and temp y gets that, and return temp. So I am doubling the values, so to say, and, and creating a vector. Now, is this a useful function? No. All I'm trying to illustrate is the difference between this, returning the temporary, versus constructing the temporary right here in line. Uh, first of all, I'm going to uh, run this. Actually, let's step through this. I'm going to hit F10. And we make a main vector, which causes the uh, default, or uh, yeah, the default constructor to execute. You see here on our trace statements, we have the default constructor. And then down here, I just said, hey, by the way, we're still in main, so over here in main. And then let's go into double me value. So I'm going to hit F11 to step into this. F11, we're going to create a vector temp, so F11. And notice temp, where you have to call the the default constructor for temp. I'm going to hit F10 through this because I don't want to step into the Cout's operator insertion. F10, F11. Uh, and then we say temp x is x. I'm hitting F11 through these. So, or it's x times 2. So there's 2 and there's 4 because x is 1, y is 2, and so on and so forth. Then we return temp. Now watch what happens at this point when I press F11. Okay, what do you, you think is going to happen? It, we're returning temp. And down here, I'm I'm assigning. Oops, I'm assigning that value into my main vector. Now, no, we are, we already called the default constructor for my main vector, so this is going to call an assignment. But then, what's going to happen here? Watch what happens. F11. Where did we end up? We're at the copy constructor. Why? Hmm. I don't know. Actually, I do know, and I'll explain it in a sec. But I'm going to F10 through this. And then F11 from here on out. And then F11, 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 look where we end up, the assignment operator. Okay. Then we go through this, we see out, and we do our assignment, return star this, and so on and so forth. Here is the output as it currently stands. We, we get the vector 2D in main. Vector 2D, that's the temporary inside of our function, our double me values function. Here's the copy constructor. I should have put an ampersand right there. And then the assignment operator. Okay. So let me shift F5 this. I'm actually going to control F5 this, get it in the console, let it run to completion. I'm going to store this away to the side so we can do some compare and contrast. Now let me come back in here. I'm going to 
Uh, instead of doing what we're doing now, I'm going to, uh, instead of making this temporary, let's just create the object and return it at the exact same time. So x times 2, y times 2, the result will be identical. But now I'm saying, hey, construct the object and return it at the exact same time. Not only is our code maybe a little cleaner, maybe a little leaner, but uh, we're also returning this temporary, if you would, that we're creating. And uh, I'm, at first, I'm just going to control F5 this and put this right here. And then here's our old output. Let's put it side by side, maybe right about there. What's the difference? Well, looks like the one in main was still constructed. Let's use white here. One in main was still constructed. We still see that we're in main. We create a vector 2D object, but then we see the operator assignment. So the thing that's missing is this copy constructor call. Well, why is it gone? The assignment operator, the reason we have the assignment operator is yes, we, we did an assignment right here. So we had to call the assignment operator. But why was the copy constructor executed in the original code? I'm going to undo this and get back to where we were at. This is this is called the return value optimization. I guess because it's it's part of the return value, but going back to this. Oh, whoops. Let's go to temp. Um, here we create the object. We do some stuff with it. We return temp. And temp right now is in the stack frame of double me values. Okay, if you don't understand stack frames, I have videos for that on the C++ playlist. But basically, main cut's called. And here's main stack frame. And then we call double me values. And part of double me values stack frame is to create this temporary object in here. But if we change the code up to do this, well, we're creating the object right as we return. And the C++ compiler does a little trick and says, you know what? That's fine and dandy. I don't need to copy that object out here. Before, what it would do is this double me values has to return a value, an instance of a vector 2D class so that it can copy. And so with our code the way it was, let me roll back here. I know I keep bouncing between these two, but with a code like this, we create temp right here, and then to provide the value right here in main stack frame, it copies it out to right here, double me values, returns value. And then we have to assign it to mean main vector. So let's just say this is mean main vector here. Me main vector. Okay, this is double me values return value. Okay, and then this is temp here in double me values. But when we change the code to the return value optimization, the compiler says, you know what? We don't need to make a temporary here. I don't need this temporary here because you're immediately returning it. I'll just stuff this value directly right here. So then we forego having to create this object, call the copy constructor, and so on and so forth. A little bit of an optimization trick. Very nice. And um, we still have to have this temporary for the return value for WME values. And then me main vector is right there, and so we still have to do a copy between these two, but we were able to, just by syntactically writing this code like this, we were able to miss out or not have to eat the cost of having that temporary object there in the stack frame of double me values. So I hope that made sense. Anyway, what's, what's, uh, what's this good for? Well, let's go back to our original code. Notice here, I'm, I'm using the return value optimization there, but I'm not using it here. In fact, are there other places we could be using it? I don't see it here. I wonder, well, first of all, let's just use it here. Now, here's the trade-off, though. I'm, I'm about to use this trick. It may be readable. It may not be. I, I think this is kind of readable how it is. and Maybe readability is worth it. I don't know. You have to make that debate. Again, go back to a profiler if you really want to get into it. But I think for now, let's... Uh, Let's just do this. Let's use the return value optimization. Go right there. Now we can bring this closing up. Pop, pop, pop. Now here's an advantage. We have unit tests to back us up. So control F5. Let's make sure all the unit tests still pass. Yep, we're good. Good time to commit, make a note, that kind of thing. Anyway, so return value, 
value optimization. Just real quick, I want to go look at vector.inl. Oh, look, I just automatically naturally use that trick right here. Then I don't see anywhere else that we need to. So, okay, good. Return value optimization.